Hey everybody, this is Veronica Fomont, and you are watching Thicter Factional. What are you doing here, Fomont? Are you concerned that your parallel universe identity is stealing your real one? Go! Oh, just get Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech from your favorite movies, TV shows, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week I got in the Halloween spirit and took a gander at ghost hunting. You'll start to feel like someone's watching you, really paranoid, like something's about to happen. That's usually my cue to GTFO. <laughs> Turns out the dead don't appreciate my scary raver dance moves. Risa Kumashiro on YouTube has a creepy ghost story. He says, my brother and I had this thing where he would say goodnight to me using one of his stuffed dinosaurs. Our bedrooms were right next to each other. Now one night after doing our nightly ritual, I woke up and in my doorway there was a floating teddy bear staring right at me. It totally freaked me out. I'm not sure why I got like vampire voice there for a second, but whatever, I'm, I'm mixing my Halloweens. Um, that's pretty strange, Risa. So thank you so much for the story, for your efforts in trying to scare me. I reward you with a glorious Ghostbusters poster to help you fend off those haunted teddy bears. Due to popular demand, this week we explore the realism of fringe science as seen in the J.J. Abrams hit series, Fringe. The show deals with greater than human super intelligence and the wildly confusing collision of parallel universes. Thankfully, we have not one but two experts in all things transhuman. First, let's talk to John Dukowski, the show's film editor, and see what he has to say about the production. Hey John, can you give us a little information on the role you play with the creation of Fringe? I'm one of three editors uh, on Fringe. So a third of the episodes of Fringe I've actually had a hand in creating, building. So what are some of the problems that you guys encounter with, with parallel universes and, and different plot lines all coming together in the same show? We can have characters from our universe that experience different timelines and um, you know, the, the same actor playing two different characters from multiple universes and the question is like, what, are, what is each character aware of and we need to keep it really consistent. Do you ever find yourself getting confused with the alternate timelines? It, it's always a little iffy as to what, I, what a character on Fringe actually experienced because the timelines that happened were very similar but slightly different because of some events that happened in the past. So absolutely, we always get confused. Let's talk about the butterfly effect a little bit. Uh, tell me how something can happen in a parallel universe that ultimately affects a normal one later down the road. The entire series is based on the idea that one event um, by a grieving father 30 years ago has completely changed uh, the fate of two universes. Now, do the fringe scientists ever come in and sit with you during the edit to make sure everything kind of makes sense? We've had um, a couple different scientists uh, consult on the show, and they've come in and they've said, well, you know, Walter's, uh, Walter's procedure here, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, analyzing DNA, and that's not exactly correct, and this chemical's wrong, and, and this, that, and the other thing. We try to get the science as, as correct as possible, um, but at the same time, we try not to get it in the way of telling the story. Awesome, John, this was great. Uh, so other than Fringe, where can everyone find your work online? You can IMDB my name, John Dikowski, um, and you can see episodes that I've caught and uh, you know, hopefully whatever I'm doing after Fringe is over. That's a pretty cool gig that John has, but my single universe is hard enough to manage. I can't really imagine adding any more. To get nitty gritty in the science supporting the show, we have a real life Fringe expert, Stephen Grenade. Stephen, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you? Excellent. Uh, we hear you're a big Fringe fan, uh, but what about it do you like? I really like the fact that it's blending science fiction and science fiction concepts with just really good character-driven drama. There's a lot having to do with alternate timelines. Can you explain some of the real scientific theories behind the ideas of alternate dimensions? Absolutely. Uh, are you familiar with Schrodinger's cat? Yes, of course. Yeah, that's the, the, the cat that's supposed to be alive and dead at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can have things that are in sort of a, a superposition of two states, two quantum mechanical states. So in the case of the Schrodinger's cat, they set things up so that maybe the cat is alive and maybe the cat is dead and you don't know until you look. The idea is if they're in two states, if your waveform is in two states, you look at it and it collapses down into to one probability. Now, a lot of scientists didn't really like this. This is what led Einstein to say, God doesn't play dice with the universe. He didn't like the idea that you had this probability and you didn't know until you observed, until you made a measurement. But there was a physicist named Everett back in the 50s who said, well, maybe that's not what's happening. Maybe instead what happens is they're both right. And when you have a quantum mechanical event like that, it splits off into two pieces, into two separate universes, in effect. Now, what would happen if someone actually met their counterpart from an alternate universe? The alternate dimensions are all around us all the time if the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is correct. They're just sort of along a different dimension uh, of something called Hilbert space, and we can't normally get there. But if you could get there, 
Assuming it's one of the universes that the physics is sort of like us, you're not going to have some sort of Ron Silver time cop explosion. You just, it'd be like meeting anybody else. So has there ever been anything on the show that made you think, okay, that can't possibly happen? One of the things that uh, I think you have to sort of come to, to grips with if you're looking at a science fiction show is that the science has to take second place to the actual plot of the show and, and the stories that they're trying to tell. Uh, you know, it's sort of like with the movie Looper, um, the guy behind Primer said, well, you know, your, your time travel doesn't really work. Well, time travel doesn't really work, but if you stop there, then you don't really have a good movie. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. And where can everyone follow your work online? You can find me online Twitter at Sargent, S-A-R-G-E-N-T. I'm also available on Google Plus or on the website Grenades, G-R-A-N-A-D-E-S dot com. Now this science is definitely tinkering on the fringe of reality, but since I'm proud of my imagination, I'm giving it fact. Of course, there's a lot of Hollywood magic added to the J.J. Abrams television series, but there is science to support the fact that parallel universes are not as far-fetched as we once thought. And do you want your mug on Fact or Fictional? Send me a video or comment letting me know what tech you want to see on the show. And if it's tricky enough, you might just see yourself in a future episode. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Fact or Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our new shows. I'll see you next time. Learn about the history and just kind of sit around in the weird ambiance. Like, this is nice, you know, classic Victorian. Sometimes you go in old buildings that are all, you know, craggly and falling apart. If you're interested,